Ladies first, hot lips first. <laughs>
first kiss between Hot Lips and Hawkeye during the shelling. Um, how, when you read the script, you got the script and you found out you were going to get be kissed and kiss. What was your reaction to that script? And what Alan was it wrote kissing? it for us. <laughs> Alan actually wrote it earlier than we ever got to do it because our executive producer at that point, Gene Reynolds, lovely man, lovely, talented producer, felt it was a little too soon for the audience to accept that relationship. We were so antagonistic, you know, Hawkeye and Margaret. Uh, but at, at a certain point, Alan said, look, they love us. They, they'll, they'll believe us. We know what we're doing. And so he said, go ahead. And I must say, after it aired, Gene called me, and he went on and on about how wonderful it was. Uh, the, the characters, or Alan and Loretta, or Hawkeye and, and Margaret, were so real to you all, you were ready to accept what we did. And boy, when you're getting shelled at the front, you fall in somebody's arms and you hang on tight. And so it was very believable. And then, of course, when you had that proximity, the respect and the affection was already there, just kind of bubbled up and bubbled over. So it just was a kind of natural progression. I was thrilled when I when Alan gave this script and that we were going to work out, you know, what happened. So uh, it's one of my favorites because it reveals so much about their inner characters that ha we haven't seen before, you know. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Farr. Yes. The next question, and this one sticks out. I didn't kiss anybody. <laughs> <laughs> A birthday cake. We did a show <laughs> called Birthday Girls, the, the, that Jamie and I. <laughs> the next question is not match related. It comes from Jack Purcell from DC Comics. It has to do with Cannonball Run and the Sheik. Um, I'm trying to remember the exact thing is what did the Sheik have to have against wingtip shoes? Against what shoes? Wing against wingtip wing wing shoes. shoes. I have no uh, idea. I know. Uh, in Nash, we had the wingtip shoes yep. then, but I, yeah, yeah because I, 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 the sheik, I, had, I have no idea. They were running around handing out cash to the mafia guys, uh, saying wingtip shoes and just giving them money. I, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you something, there wasn't a sober breath on that. <laughs> What it was, I think it was probably the second one, the one with Telly Savalas in it, who was uh, the gangster yep. in it, and he's going to bump off all of us, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., Burt Reynolds, uh, Don DeLuise, and myself, and he goes, any last requests? So they had written in the script, you know, for me, uh, I'm not couscous, and somebody else with something else, and they didn't have a line for Dean Martin, so I went over, and I whispered in his ear, he says, I like that one. So we go down the line, and he said, how about you, and I couscous, because they get to, uh, D. Martin, and he says, okay, any last requests? He says, can I see your wine list? All right, first question, come on over to the mic. And what's your name? So my name's Becca, my grandmother's name is Anne, and she gave me a question because she's the one that has watched the show her whole so she's 90, she can't be here today. So she wanted me to tell you that MASH is the best TV show ever. Her question was, if there was a particular episode or storyline on MASH that was really close to either of your hearts. Okay, birthday girls. <laughs> that, birthday that, the girls. one that Loretta just mentioned. Okay. Uh, that, that, that was what. But of course, you know what? We did what? Over 200, 200 shows or something? So, you, you know, it, it's amazing. When Loretta talked about uh, Alan and, and her uh, having that kiss, and that was one of the most wonderful things about our series because our characters grew. They weren't the same people in every episode. You got to see different sides of them. You got to see when they were angry. You got to see when they were in trouble. You got to see when they were happy. You got to see, it was a, a the, probably the best writing, I think, of any of the shows because the characters grew and you grew with them. And I think that's why you, you became part of our family as we became part of your family. So I think that uh, a lot of these shows I, I'm amazed. How about the one, you know, where David Ogden Steyer's Major Winchester, 
kind of the, the, the soldier that died for that moment and then comes back and he wants to know what happened during that time. And that's it. That's something that he has to find out about. How about the soldier that was going to die on Christmas uh, Day? Remember? Yeah, we changed, oh, yeah. changed the we calendar. Didn't want, they, yeah. You wouldn't want uh, the children to grow up uh, remembering the father dying yeah. on Christmas oh, Day. Yeah. And so uh, this is uh, against all, all Hippocratic oaths that you take. We changed the time of death. We made it the next day so that it, it was never going to be Christmas Day. There were a lot of, we did a nose job, which is definitely, yeah. we did, we I wasn't did. in that one, we did, we did, we did, we did, we but they wouldn't go for it. They wanted that nose. That uh, this man put Toledo on the map. Yeah. Oh, that's tacos, tacos, hot dogs. <laughs> You know, uh, it, it just is phenomenal what a family we all became. I know, we know what you feel about us because we feel the same thing about you guys. We feel like it's, it's a big family and uh, people, uh, what, some of the things we get in the mail, honestly, should be published. It's like poetry. You're my safe place. Oh. You are the same place I go. Uh, you are you are my comfort zone. Do you know what that means to us? We're doing a sitcom, right? And yet, we're we're giving that kind of solace, and in return, you're making us feel like a million bucks tax free. You know, so, <laughs> so right? Yes, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> your, your mother's ninety years old. My grandmother. Oh, your grandmother's ninety. She, you, is she single? <laughs>
very important. So at this, after the second reading, we took a break, the writers would disappear, come back, and then have incorporated already some of the changes. Right? And it was it, the most exciting, the most creative moments of the week because, uh, yeah, and now as far as <clears throat> um, extemporaneous uh, shooting and adding something funny, one uh, one show I had um, a drunk scene. She was a great drunk. I love Margaret <laughs> was an Irish drunk. You know, she just absolutely loved the blues. I'm not so think as you drunk I am. <laughs> she would say things like that. So uh, I had uh, this wonderful drunk scene with uh, um, Alan and I, I think Wayne. Yeah, and we were in the swamp. I was in the middle, and the two of them. And we're drinking, and we're laughing, and we're making fun of uh, the lipless wonder, Frank Burns, you know. <laughs> making fun of him, and I'm, I'm trying to leave that relationship, and I'm flirting with Wayne, and anyway, so we're, we're reveling. And who walks into the swamp but Frank Burns? And he looks at me, shocked. Margaret, you're, you're drunk. And I say, Right, Reverend Davidson. <laughs> now, that's from uh, Miss Sadie Thompson. As <laughs> this this uh, religious man, Reverend Davidson, winds up attacking Sadie Thompson, but he's a religious man. So, so I say, right, Reverend Davidson, and now uh, Hawkeye and Trapper are laughing, and so Frank Burns goes off in a hop, and we're still laughing, and I looked up and I said, who was that? <laughs> well, <laughs> Alec and Wayne fell off the chairs, and they kept it in. It was just too, it's not in syndication probably because it, everything gets uh, snipped off, but uh, that was a very funny kind of extemporaneous thing that just dribbled out and we kept laughing. Uh, but we were allowed to do that. They had great taste. They knew what was you know, right to keep in, and they let us do that. They gave us great confidence and great freedom, and we, in turn, did the same thing with them. It was a real beautiful communion, a real humor. May I add something to that also, to show you how uh, wonderful the uh, producers and writers were. Uh, we'd be doing a scene, and there would be an absolute, it'd be a serious scene, and, and Larry Gelbart, or one of our other writers and producers, had that wonderful line in there that had a big laugh line. And they decided to take the laugh line out because they thought it would hurt the scene. Rather take the laugh, the joke that was in there, and put it someplace else. It was that funny of a joke because it would take the rhythm of the scene going on. I mean, that's how they they would think they care. They it. Cared it was about, about the moment. Yes, uh -huh. exactly yes, right. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Yeah. There, were, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there were other shows, for example, that would write quote. Emmy episodes for their start. They really? never did that with us. Whatever we won, we won because we were good in that particular episode, but it wasn't like our Emmy episode, if you understand what I mean by that. And it was always about the quality and the excellence of that show. And uh, just, it was well, really- 50 years later, we're all still watching. Talking about it too, and, and, thank and laughing you so at it. Much. Yeah. Thank you. Those parents 
and grandparents and great grandparents. They keep passing these wonderful life lessons on to each generation. So you're here now, young, you know, everybody's young to us, but anyway. <laughs> uh, it is astonishing that some of us uh, have presidents that you didn't, you know? <laughs> and, uh, uh, lucky Lake has that. Anyway, so uh, th that we are still, we have this common ground of, of love and life and liberty and, and wisdom and, and life, but mostly life that we share as a family, as a family. Yeah. Mostly because these weren't cardboard characters, these were real people. Jamie and Klinger and Toledo and all, you all were a part of that. And you always will be, that's it. I just wanted to add also the, the, the music in that show. Uh, it was very haunting to children. For some reason, whether they knew what the show was about or not, they heard that theme yeah. and it drew them to the TV set. And the interesting part about this, I just found out about uh, some time ago, is that uh, uh, the, the, the director, the producer of the, the original MASH show, the movie, wanted the worst song ever written, okay? Uh, the music and also the lyrics. And his, apparently his son, who was very, very young, wrote the lyrics to that. Suicide hoping, is Yeah, su suicide is painless. And, yeah, and he thought it would be terrible. Now. Well, the son made more money off of the song <laughs> than the play where it is than the producer than the director. <laughs> <laughs> Royalties <laughs> will out. Oh, wow. So, you know, that, that again, that is, it was an attraction. They, he got fooled, you know, the, uh, the producer did, because it, it was so fitting. As, as anything else that we did with that show, it was so fitting. Yeah. It just fit. Everything was comfortable. Everything worked. I, I, um, the, the original five, I think we were in love from Hello. And it was very cold shooting the pilot. Wayne and I had this theory. We were all bundled up together. It's five in the morning in the mountains, and the boys are in Hawaiian shirts, right? <laughs> Wayne is blue. He's, he's blue. And, and we're all huddled together, and we got to know each other really well. And we're, <laughs> so how could you not fall in love? You're like, you know. And uh, uh, it was magic from day one. And uh, very shortly after that, we started to um, feel the responses that these people, these characters, were getting, and we were feeling the love. And in, in the doing over the years, we began to realize what was happening. It was a phenomenon, what was happening. Wayne said to me one morning, he said, you know, people run into me, they say, keep up the good work. He said, I feel like I'm on a football team. <laughs> <laughs> but they responded to the hard work and the good work, and, it, and that is so wonderful to say about our society, that they're responding to that goodness, to that, that positivity. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Vic, may I also add that, you know, MASH in the first season was going to be canceled. It was, uh, out of 65 shows, it was number 57. <laughs> and the ratings. It was on opposite world, the opposite the wonderful world of Disney, Disney on Sunday night. You don't compete with that. Okay. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, Mr. Paley, who was then the chairman of CBS, said that he was going to have to cancel the show. And Mrs. Paley, uh, her nickname was Bay Paley. Takes a woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> said she uh, liked the show. And why did they uh, move it to another time spot? So we, uh, another man, uh, decided to, uh, to do what the woman told him to do. And uh, moved it to Saturday night, which became, in television history, the greatest night in the history of television. All in the Family, MASH, Mary Tyler Moore, Bob Newhart Show, and the Carol Burnett Show. And no one left. that we became the lead in to other shows to help them, like uh, to get WKRP in yeah. Cincinnati and other shows. They would use us to be like, It was like, you know, to understand it, you're moving into a new neighborhood, and it takes the neighbors a couple of weeks, if not a couple of months, to get to know and pay attention to get into your groove, so to speak. And uh, one more thing about the um, music. 
It is the second most recorded piece of music in our country. You're supposed to say, what's the first? <laughs> the National Anthem. Is that a credit or what? But Mandel, I mean, well, I, it is haunting, haunting. And it's right about the kids. For some reason, they respond to, I have a letter from somebody. This little kid was in the high chair with the spoon, <laughs> the, you know, loving the music, would, uh, would react every time the, the show came on. You know, it, it is, there's something magical about that music. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank well, you. Hey, Shady, you asked the question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next. You two in Hawkeye, you're complete icons. I love it. Seriously, so good. It's always, like, fascinating. Uh, fun fact, um, my playlist is completely bonkers and mashes on it. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is on there, right up there with the banana splits theme. <laughs> it's on there. It's, it's, hi, hi, what's your hi, name? Hi. hi, I'm Lucian. Hi. Uh, hi. Just, I just wanted to say to you, thank you so much for creating this world that we, we uh, got to be a part of. You said before it was just a sitcom, or I don't think you diminished that way, but you said it was a sitcom, but you know... Uh, was that was not my feeling. <laughs> no, of course, of course. But I mean, but basically, when I go to the producer and ask for, you know, something a, a little more gravitas or whatever, they'd say, it's a sitcom. No, it's not, Gene. I'd say, yeah. it's, it's, there's something more going on here. Well, whatever the struggle was that produced what you produced, it was so far ahead of its game, it was crazy. You were doing, doing things not using laugh track, shooting in black and white, dealing with civil rights, women's rights issues, anti-war, yeah. all in a way that wasn't pandering to anybody. Like nobody ever felt pandered to by MASH, but we felt it might might. That was that's a really hard thing to do and I think it's part of the success. Yeah. But I did have a question. Um, I grew up in LA, I'm an LA kid, my mom was in the industry. It never occurred to me that Malibu Creek State Park was fifteen miles from my house. That was Korea to me. <laughs> <laughs> was not very magical for me as a kid, but I, for some reason it never occurred to me. I could just walk around <laughs> the exterior locations. So I'm, I did that finally as an adult with my son in my 40s. I got to do that. It was, it was like fantastic. I'm wondering when the last time that either one of you were at Malibu Creek State Park in the exteriors. Well, you've got your... You don't I, 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 I lived near that area, oh. but I hadn't been back there at all. That, that uh, entire uh, back lot for Fox uh, they shot a lot of movies there besides just uh, MASH in Korea. Planet uh, of the Apes? Yeah, Planet of the Apes was shot there. Yeah. Jesse James with Henry Fonda and uh, Jerome Power was shot there. That's in the 30s. Yeah. Uh, they used to have a cyclorama that was out there in a big uh, concrete area to do miniatures for battleship scenes that they had there. So oh, wow. that was quite a, uh, quite a location for but many of their outdoor movies yeah. that they had. The Motion Picture Home uh, is also close by, and uh, my mom was there towards the end of her long life. She passed at 106. Wow. Her favorite. You see, it? <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke. You know, like an interviewer would say, and who's your favorite on that? Mrs. Sweat. Jamie Fart Mom. You no, know, Mom. You say next to my daughter, Jamie Fart Mom. No, Jamie is my favorite. <laughs> Jamie and me and Mike, I think, and maybe Alan. Anyway, we're all in uh, an S SVU going back to the hotel. The phone rings. It's my brother. And he says, Jamie was the best dressed, you know, at the show. <laughs> uh, who is this? <laughs> it's my brother. Uh, he, I said, you mean, of course, next to your sister. He, no, Jamie was the best. <laughs> uh, he was the best in my family. He was the favorite in my family. I have to tell you, I used to visit her at the motion picture hall because I don't live too far from there. I'm Nell, expecting to Nell. go there very soon as myself. <laughs> it is Nell. Yeah, yeah, Nell. At any rate, I visit her and I say, Nell, I, is there anything, anything I could get you at all? She said, well, you could get me uh, what I need you possibly couldn't ever get me here. And I said, how about vanilla ice cream? Okay. Vanilla <laughs> <laughs> ice cream. She was a wonderful, wonderful lady and, and uh, just amazing. And we, we uh, always had Loretta and uh, Nell over at, at Christmas, Christmas time. time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, she called the house Jamie's Castle. My, it's a house. She's 
I'm talking about like making a joke, having a sense of humor, showing that. And I turned around, he was gone. He's writing the episode right already. <laughs> and it, it, it was wonderful. My, uh, uh, an old friend from one of the nursing uh, well, the staff uh, met me and she found me so changed. She said, you should be so much fun. You used to joke all the time. And she kind of revives that. Uh, in, in me, and the next thing you know, there's this funny scene with Alan, we're in the supply tent, and uh, we're making jokes, and I'm making jokes, and he looks up and says, Margaret, you made a joke. <laughs> you know, I mean, it wasn't a great joke, but it was a joke, he said. You know? and, and you know, uh, do, you how, uh, do we have enough sofa? Yeah, it's in the, it's in the living room next to the, 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 the end table. No, so, sofa, no sofa, and we, and we had this silly, wonderful thing, and it all came out of, my saying, I wish we could see that, and we did immediately. It was an amazing thing. Uh, creatively, uh, as actors, we can tell you it's the most exciting thing in, in your career. Wonderful. Mr. Farr, did you have a favorite uh, episode? My favorite one with you is with the hang glider. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I do you know how many pairs best. of fuzzy slippers? Okay, I, I have now. Okay, so those you are have pretty your, good. You have a pair. Just right. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, 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 I kept the original fuzzy things. <laughs> <laughs>
because Harry Morgan, oh, what he was a devil. Oh, he could make us, he could make us laugh or cry. It was up to him. Whatever he wanted to do, he, he just never, play us. Never wanted to have all seven of us together. Yeah, that yeah. was, no, that was the worst thing. There was one time you were in the mess tent together. <laughs> when McLean, this was when McLean Stevenson was was there, and we started laughing, you know, and the thing, and they and they were getting upset because you know time was money and that. So they called the producers down, all right, to, to scare us and that. And as we started to go, the producers started laughing. <laughs> so then they had to call the executives at the front of the office, the studio, that, and they came on the set and they started laughing. So the director said, "Let the hell with it. Let's just go home and do this tomorrow." <laughs> Dominic, remember Dom? Yeah, Dom was yeah. our camera operator, he even uh, directed, I think, eventually, but he would laugh so hard the camera, <laughs> the camera would shake, would have to redo the scene. It was, uh, honestly, some of the stories sound like uh, a comic book, but it was that real. It really was, it tickled us as well as tickling the audience, you know, just. Um, Wonderful. When we were talking about David and memorable things that he did, he had that wonderful episode where he taught the soldier uh, the uh, concerto for one one hand. Yeah, the the right. soldier had lost a hand, and he he gave him the music so that he could play on the one hand. But David had speeches like, you know, I studied piano as a child, and I learned the notes and how to play, but I didn't have the gift. You have the Use it, don't, you know, and it, it was just, he was, oh, please, David. David was such an actor, he could go out on the weekend and do King Lear, Lear like, like my friend here did King Lear, you know. But they were actors, actors that, that I worked with. Actors, actors, yeah. This, well, unfortunately. Oh, ready out of time? Yeah. Okay. So, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I know, I know, I'm, I'm gonna put, <laughs> I know it's your birthday, so birthday weekend. It's your birthday weekend. This, I, in my family, we do weekend, so it's your birthday. But do the month. All right, birthday month. So we do have another panel coming in. We have three people. So instead of me getting in trouble, instead of you guys getting in trouble, I'm gonna let the audience pick which one of those three. It's all true. It's uh, not urban, uh, or, or, or urban legend. No, uh, because Matt was actually leaving the show. They didn't want us walking around all week in a slump, so they left off the last page that they may or may not use it. It's called the tag, and they can chop it off and not use it. But uh, they wrote it because they thought it was a way to show what happens in a war, and it, it was an opportunity since he was leaving anyway. Uh, let's let's demonstrate something serious here. So they let that page out where Radar, Gary, comes in and reads it. Gary gets handed the page and he, they were very close and he goes in and we're there and he reads that message that uh, our lovely commander just uh, got killed. And what you saw was, I have to tell you, was what you would have seen whether we knew it or not. That was real. We loved Matt, and we, you would have had that reaction from all of us. And the way Gary read it, choking, and you know, because uh, be prior to this, when Matt is getting on the chopper and he salutes Gary, and it tears your heart out. 
They, so, yes, that's all. It's a true story. We did get that page. And, uh, but we're the but only ones, the cast were the only ones that knew it. So the reaction that you saw from all the other people in there, that was the first time they heard it. They so heard what, it. You, yeah. what you saw was real, I mean, the reactions from uh, yeah. those people. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, 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 but my point is, honestly, you're talking to a, a group of incredible actors that went, would have been that way. You know, it just would, wouldn't have been as painful for us, maybe. But, but uh, yeah, it was, and it was an amazing decision. And the overflow, I mean, the overwhelming response from people saying, "How dare you kill our, you know?" And they would have the opportunity to write back. We didn't. The war did. <laughs> you want to, you want to take a stand. That's what you're going to fight. You know. And so it, it was a wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so oh, you're gonna go, he's going to go to your table. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, why don't you make okay. a personal appearance? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Uh, my name is Clara. I'm from Arizona, actually. So. Wow, okay. <laughs> uh, so I, used, I, I actually still watch your show on reruns and stuff like that. I actually have them on DVD, and I play them while I'm working at home. And while I always have them on the background, how do... When, you, when I get to your last episode you ever did, I usually end up having to stop <coughs> what I'm doing to watch it because it's so bittersweet. How hard was it for you guys to do that last episode knowing that was the end? Bittersweet is a great word for that. I had to look. Harry was one of, I, I, Harry was everything to me and Margaret. I mean, really, and we lived very close together. We saw each other. During the weekend, on weekends, his wife and I were buddies, and it's just, I'd cook, he'd cook, then cook would go out, whatever. We were very, very close, so I had to look into those blue eyes and say, you dear sweet man, I'll never forget you, and I'm choking up now because I miss him still. It was tough, it was a body blow for us to uh, those two cigar-smoking buddies. <laughs> you know, uh, it was incredibly difficult. The, the, the directors kept saying, please, everybody stop crying now. <laughs> just, just stop, just, okay, we're gonna go again for another take. Nobody can cry, now stop it. <laughs> How, uh, you know, we spent a life together and as evidence, we're still living that family life. We're, we're you know, we, we know each other. Thank, thank you, you. Very much. everybody. Hey, hey, are you listening? Hey, this is Billy West. I knew you'd recognize my voice, but sometimes you can't. Because you're watching King's Entertainment Reviews. Now, I would love it, being the professor, if you'd comment, like, and subscribe. You hear that? He knows what he's talking about. Because he's a smart old bastard. Yeah. All right. Now, get with it.